No, we have to do like a like a thing, man. Like, oh, like this. Like right, this. That works. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh. I already feel closer to you now. <laughs> when you share an oyster with a man, it gets intimate. Yeah. Okay. Yum. Yeah, that was good. Australia has a long immigrant history. Let's talk about it very briefly. Aboriginal Australians are said to have arrived on the mainland about 70,000 years ago. In the 17th century, it was discovered by Dutch sailors. The official British colonization started in 1788 and they set out to start a penal colony in New South Wales. In 1837, Melbourne was first named. Port Phillip started receiving immigrants in 1839, mostly convicts to work in the wool industry and 20 years after in the gold mining industry. At this point, German, Chinese, and UK immigrants are all in the mix. What follows are years of evolving and restrictive immigration laws, colony debates, and land fights. After World War II, Australia was facing an underpopulation crisis and started accepting mostly Southern and Central Europeans on their shores. It got so bad that in fact in 1945, Minister of Immigration Arthur Caldwell wrote, if the experience of the Pacific War has taught us one thing, it surely is that 7 million Australians cannot hold 3 million square miles of this Earth's surface indefinitely. Until today, Australia remains one of the most sparsely populated countries in the world. This was followed by waves of Vietnamese, Chinese, American, Indian, and Filipino immigrants among others. Bringing us to today, 30% of people living in the state of Victoria were born overseas and about 50% of Victorians have a parent that was born overseas, creating a blend of 200 countries speaking 260 languages, a true melting pot. With so many ingredients in the said proverbial pot, you can only imagine the culinary excitement all these diverse backgrounds bring to the dinner table. We started off our exploration in the Greek precinct. So this place is called Stalactites. Well for obvious reasons. Um, there are some on the wall, but it's basically an institution here. It's been open since 1978, I believe, always owned by the same family. Um, and it's just proper Greek food. And it's nine in the morning, so this is basically our breakfast. And we have a mixed grill, some chicken suvaki, and some saganaki cheese, and it looks absolutely delicious. What I love about this place is that it's still family run. Both mom and dad are working hard in the kitchen, grandpa is reading a newspaper with his coffee, and the daughter is taking care of us at the counter. A true institution still run with so much pride. This is a chicken gyro, or chicken gyro rather. No white sauces or anything here. This is like proper straight up. A good Greek salad with obviously some feta cheese. Sweet tomatoes, bite of the onions. Saganaki cheese. It's like a pan fried white cheese. A little bit of lemon juice, some olive oil. It just comes together beautifully. Look at that beauty. Can you imagine they're doing this at nine in the morning so everything's cooked fresh, which is amazing. What's great about this place? Middle of the CBD, and it's open 24 hours. Oops. Sausage is still alive. Italian food is second nature in Melbourne, so we headed to Osteria Ilaria, under the same ownership of the renowned Tipo 00, one of the best places to have pasta in the city. I met up with my friend Ross, who was born in Davao, Philippines, and moved to Australia in his early teens. He's the chef at Rice Paper's sister, a delicious Southeast Asian restaurant, which we will visit later on. All right, so question one, why do they call you Trouble Rock? <laughs> <laughs> um, you got quite, you have, you have the reputation. <laughs> no, because we're neighbors, you know, and I always see them. Trouble is a compliment. It is a compliment, yeah. trouble is a compliment. It's like me saying, it's disgusting, it's like, you're awesome. <laughs> it's good. Exactly, exactly. exactly. So what's, what's great about, um, this place, Austria Ilaria, right? Yeah, Austria Ilaria. I think like what Melbourne is all about is um, a lot of dishes you can share, and this place is like the like I'm the model for it. Yeah, yeah, because like oh, yeah, like nice small plates, seasonal, change menu all the time. And what I, what I find in Melbourne is really interesting is kind of like how everyone kind of mixes around different cultures. Yep. So where 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 is that line between 
Is it traditional Italian food or is it Italian food done in a very Melbourne way? It is like modern, but in the same way like it's, it's traditional because like it uses like old school techniques and stuff. So this is the octopus uh, braised, right? In olive oil? Yeah, confit in oil. And then finished on the Japanese grill. Yes. If someone were to ask you, yep. what's typical Melbourne or Australian food? Is there, what's, the, what's the answer to that? But I don't know, Melbourne like food is like it's pretty it's pretty vast. Like you guys come into Melbourne. Like I wouldn't take it to a fancy restaurant really. I, I take it to Lingnan, like these places are like hospital spots. Yeah. Like after drinks, like after work drinks and stuff. So. Okay. What, what do you call that? A hot spot? Yeah, it's a hot spot. It's like everyone from like Andrew McConnell finds like six okay. restaurants. Like, this is their spot. This is yeah. their spot. People mostly eat out here, right? Or do you think, because like, when we, we were talking about it a while ago, everything's always full. Yeah. Melbourne's just got that vibe. Like people eat out like Monday night, Tuesday night, you know? Like, yeah. After work, hang out, a couple of drinks, a couple of snacks. It's just a culture, I think. So we have mackerel with some mussels, potatoes, and some sort of herbal puree. Sting, sting, natural. Sting, herb, herb, yeah. That's a very Australian thing. Yeah, it's an Australian thing. Sting, natural. Then we have some chickpeas here, right? Yeah, chickpeas with um, capical capsicums. It's like a play on a warm hummus. Yep. And then we have the King George whiting, whiting yep. Yeah. Nice. With some uh, clams. clams, man. Let's dig in. I need to eat because I feel like I'm getting tipsy already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's on you, man. You have to eat, man. So if someone only had like a couple of days in Melbourne, what would you suggest in terms of what kind of cuisine they, they try? If there are, are there any like standout places that you think are kind of very like authentic Melbourne that you need to try? Like, I mean, besides from the meat pies and the big market. So yeah, I'll take him. Here, Australia, people. Um, this depends who's coming. Um, yeah, so. Little Italy in Melbourne is known as Ligon Street, and you can imagine how much great food you can get here. I'll be listing a bunch of some of my recommended restaurants under this immigrant food umbrella in the caption below. From Israeli to African and South American, there's a little bit of everything for everyone. Nick, so what, are guys, what are you guys about here in um, rice, paper, uh, rice Paper Sister? So Rice Paper Sister is a, um, Southeast Asian restaurant. Uh, so we got three stores, it's rice, paper, scissors, and this is the third one, uh, which is focused on this is Southeast Asian flavors, um, a bit of Filipino, Balinese, Thai, um, paired with cooked cocktails, nice wine list, and just good vibes, man. Your heritage is Filipino. Right? Filipino, but yeah. You were born and raised in Australia. Yes. Do you... I, was, I was born there and I came here. Okay. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Couldn't tell with his real strong Davo accent, <laughs> obviously. Uh, <laughs> But how does that influence you? So Filipino food here is not, I'm guessing, not as big as Thai or Vietnamese. Yeah, exactly. Like but Filipino food really has, is not being in Melbourne yet. Okay. Um, so I'm kind of trying to introduce it like slowly in the menus and stuff, but not the whole menu. And what are their reactions usually? Oh, people love it, man. Southeast Asian food is another strong contender in the scene. And Melbourne has created a very specific style of the mixed Asian format that a lot of restaurants in the area practice where flavors are authentic, yet the presentation and techniques are modern. So when you come out with dishes, what kind of like goes to your mind? Well, I mean... Do you I think of a specific country? Do you... Well, obviously we have to stay in the box, kind of what we do. Um, but obviously based on seasonality and like, the chefs having good ideas, like Alex could have a good idea and we'll talk about it. Does he actually do any cooking or...? Oh <laughs> yeah, <laughs> She's being nice. <laughs> <laughs> He's good for branding. And cooking as well. You think this is a good face for, for branding? <laughs> <laughs> no, we have to do like a like a thing man. Like, oh, like this? Like right, that works, yeah. Oh. Oh. I already feel closer to you now. <laughs> when you share an oyster with a man, it gets intimate. Yeah. Okay. Yum. Yeah, that was good. Right. I'm so stuffed, but like I think there's always Space for seafood. It's like a cra crayfish. Kind okay. of. It's a, pretty much a. Uh, but they're full, like, right? They're pretty thick. Yeah, yeah, rock lobster. So got it. it's, uh, ah, okay, got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You know what this reminds me of? You had Nico Express, right? Before? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Those flavors. Exactly. I think maybe it's a ginger and. Yep, exactly. Exactly. The garlic with the coconut. Exactly. I think what's great about it is it's all alien, because I've never tried 
your dishes, mm. but it feels comforting. Yeah. Because it's, yeah. it's flavors that I'm, I'm used yeah, to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's kind of the aim. It's like one of the flavors that people know. I'll twist it a little bit with our twist. Yeah. And yeah, at the end of the day, it has to be tasty. Yeah, I think you guys no. achieved that. A little well, cheaper as well. Cater for the, yeah, for everyone. If you are after traditional Asian food, you don't need to look far. You have Little Saigon on Victoria Street in Richmond, Japanese, Korean, Filipino, Thai, and Malaysian food are also well represented. And of course, if you want some good Chinese eats, head on to Chinatown on Little Burke Street. All right, so we're at Hu Tong. Hu Tong is considered kind of like an institution when it comes to dumplings. Yes, well, yeah. institution. I've, I've read about it absolutely everywhere. People kind of recommend it. Um, but it's just a really good kind of traditional dumpling spot, right? Yeah. So Chinatown here, is it one of those actual legit Chinatowns? I mean... Or is it more like a tourist attraction? It is a tourist attraction, but at the same time, there are good places. The Hu Tong's good. Um, there's a couple of restaurants across the street as well. I tried Ginger Flower Boy. Drum before. Yeah, Flower Drum is Street. super amazing. Yeah. Um, a couple of noodle places, uh, Sichuan places. It's small, but it's good. Yeah, yeah it's a small street. It's yeah, small street. And, um, yeah, exactly. Nice. So here we have prawns and mushrooms. We got um, crab, and we have Sichuan wontons. Yum. Now, the menu is super straightforward and just looks delicious. If you feel our energy is low, guys, he's been drinking all day. <laughs> I've just been tired. We've been doing way too much eating for our own good. And Ross still wants to go out after this, but he has another thing coming. That's where he wants to pick up. Not do pickups, he wants to pick up. No, we're talking about um, camera pickup. Yeah, camera pickup. Ladies, if you're single and in Melbourne and you're looking for a Filipino stud, this is your man right here. You're not saying no. No. <laughs> so whether you're looking for Chinese food, or you're looking for Middle Eastern food, or African food, or Ethiopian food, that's African food, um, there are a bunch of places that would surely satisfy your needs and your craving. Melbourne is the place for you. Now if you like that video, make sure to check the next video, or the previous video, that was kind of like an introduction to Melbourne. Um, the next video we're actually talking about something that I love to eat, and that's very Australian, very simple. It's going to be all about the meat pie.